Welcome back to The Move, where we're vibing through the book 10 minutes at a time. I'm your host, Justin Koo, and in today's episode, we're looking at that one part in the Bible where the firstborn kind of gets gypped a little bit. My guest for today is the bald eagle, Tyler Morrison, and it's kind of a sad song. You've heard it over the last couple of episodes. This is the last time that Tyler's on for this season. Oh. God willing, he'll be back in the future, Arr. but uh, but it's the last time for this season. Tyler, man, it has been such a privilege. You, like, I feel like we've grown a lot together. My hair has grown and yours has not, but we've been growing together. It's been awesome. A hundred percent. This has been a super blessing for me. I have really enjoyed. In fact, I've been a little bit not not in not in a hopefully not in a sinful way. I've been a little jealous of your ability to go through <laughs> Genesis each chapter with different people and just the insights that I've gained from going through these with you. And obviously the personal relationship development, what a blessing it is. <laughs> amen. Amen. You know, I do count myself as a very fortunate individual to be able to have the front row seat, the prime seat in this experience, being able to hang out with all of you guys. It has been so much fun learning a lot. And, and we were, we were, we were talking before we turned on the cameras about just some of these themes that have been developing over the course of the book of Genesis. And one of them, which actually presents itself quite very strongly at the very beginning of this chapter is this idea of like, well, what's the whole point of this book? What's the whole point of all these crazy wild stories? I think back to one of those TikTok videos I made when we were starting the book of Genesis. And it was, it was funny because I was I was doing a reactionary piece to like the controversy around the Spider-Man movie. I don't know if you saw, not the Spider-Man, but just the articles that were coming out right when Spider-Man was released. There uh -huh. was a lot of waves being made saying, oh my goodness, the, uh, the Lord's name was used in vain five times in the latest Spider-Man film. And I actually don't know if that's true. I did not notice if that happened or not. Maybe that's uh, an indictment against me and my character and my moral standing because I didn't, I wasn't aware. <laughs> but let's just say it was true. I made a uh, I made a video saying something along the lines of like, guys, listen, if you can only learn from stories that are morally perfect, I got bad news. You're not going to like the Bible very much mm. because just in the book of Genesis, just in the book of Genesis alone, murder, lying, rape, theft, there's pimping, there's like all kinds of prostitution. There's like <laughs> so many things. And I want to say that on average, more stories have been like cringe in the sense like, I don't know what to do with this. I could never let my child read this book. More stories have been like that than the opposite where, oh, look at Jesus. He's doing the nice thing. And like, mm -hmm. like you should be like that person. No, no, no. More times than not, I'm like, ugh. I feel like Genesis is one of those off limits books. Like, you know how like in growing up in, in, uh, in church, you probably never had a lesson on Song of Solomon. I almost feel like Genesis is one of those books where it's like, don't teach kids the book of Genesis because <laughs> it's so crazy. And so all that to say, the book of Genesis has been littered with these stories. And one of the themes that we see in this chapter being presented is actually why those stories, maybe one of the reasons why, there's lots of reasons why, but maybe one of the reasons why is because it actually shows us what's coming next. Just a refresher, Jacob is about to die. He's passing along the mm -hmm. blessing to all of his sons. And several sons at the very beginning, you notice they're kind of like, uh, you, got, you got some blemishes on the record. Reuben, for example, unstable as water. You will not have preeminence. Why? Because you went to your father's bed and you defiled it. Like you slept with his wife. Like that's a pretty big deal. Simeon and Levi, weapons of violence are their swords. Like he's like, I don't want to hang out with these sons. Like he's like, I, I hope to never be in the council of these guys because they just kill people indiscriminately. <laughs> really big blemishes. And so one of the questions you could ask yourself is why have all these stories been included in the book of Genesis? And maybe... Maybe one of the answers is because it's showing us why Jacob, in a certain respects, overlooks the first three sons. Mm. The birthright, the promise, the inherited blessing, which in this case, this family is the promise of the Messiah coming through your lineage, is not going to be given to the firstborn. It's not going to be given to the secondborn or the third born, which, mm -hmm. you know, for me, I'm the first born in my family. That kind of sucks. I used to get really excited when people talk about the Bible. It's like, dude, first born gets a double portion. I get twice as much as my, my younger brother. It's like, yeah, <laughs> suck on that one, brother. And then I realized, oh, uh, no, that's not a guarantee. Like, uh, yet sometimes you don't get the blessing. And that actually, I think, is the thing that I always clung to. I loved these stories of the second born or the middle <laughs> child getting the the the, bir the birthright because I'm Where are fourth you in the of family? six. There you go. So there's still so you're saying there's a chance. So you're saying there's a chance that because Judah, 
Judah's number four. Judah's and number so four. what we see in this chapter is that Judah actually takes the position of, and I think the, literally the, 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 the version that I was reading, the word was used preeminent. Like oh. you will be number four. You're going to be the guy who's like taking control. Judah. Oof. It is, I think all of the, and for whatever reason, I, I think majority of my life, I haven't put too much thought into it, but I've definitely had the thought that a birthright is simply like, oh, this is the person who gets the most land. They get the most sure. inheritance in the will. They are the ones who, I don't know, like the father says, you're my favorite or something like that, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, and so when it makes you were, me think of the uh, the uh, Free From Sin video, uh, who's, who's dad's favorite? Who's dad's like favorite? You and your siblings all fight about who's your dad's favorite. A hundred percent. I am I am absolutely my dad's favorite. <clears throat> and the beautiful thing that I think you actually broke down before we hopped on again for me just in going through is that this birthright is what you just said. It's like the one through the pr through whom the promise would actually be fulfilled. And when we look then at Judah, all of the messianic things are just jumping off the page. Right. Like you, you see all of these things that when you know the end from the beginning in, in Jesus Christ, you're just like, oh, man. Like, this guy got it made. This guy got it made. <laughs> Lion's cub. So you got this lion metaphor, which mm -hmm. Jesus being the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hey. Um, the scepter shall not depart. There's not even a king in the, the Israelites yeah. for hundreds of years. So this is a prophecy that, that comes to be long before. And that scepter, um, it says, until tribute comes. I think other versions might say something about peace and this prince of peace. Obviously, there, there's some people that tie that to Solomon, but mm -hmm. you go further than that and you come to my favorite, Jesus Christ. Um, shout out to Jesus. <laughs> shout out to Jesus. Shout out to the homie Jesus. <laughs> big fan, big fan of your work. Um, <laughs> and then the, the last two, anytime I want just basically a quick, a quick point in a direction, a quick reference I, I text the homie Kessia Rain. I'm like, Kessia, yeah. where in the Bible does it say this? And she'll send me like three chapters like immediately because her <laughs> brain is just a repository of information. <clears throat> She's got that gift. A hundred percent. And she sent me to Isaiah 63 for right. this these last two for Judah, which is binding his foal to the vine and his donkey's colt to the choice vine. He has washed his garments in wine and his vesture in the blood of grapes. And mm. washing his garments in wine, Isaiah 63 is this whole messianic prophecy of Jesus treading the wine press alone and right. his his garments being stained red. And just it's just it's wild. Like now, now, now for, for those who maybe are aren't caught up in the latest messianic prophecies, like what what does that mean? Like, does it mean that he just like makes wine? And I think of oh, Jesus at the the wedding turning water to wine. Like, no, no, there's something. It's, about it's the referring suffering. to a specific moment. Yeah, the suffering of Jesus Christ. That and and messianic in that Jesus did it all by himself. Mm, he like, treads the wine press alone. Alone. He suffered then, so uh, that we could that we could participate in his victory, in his healing. There, uh, this is specifically referring to, if I, if I understand what you're saying, and I'm making the connections, the Garden of Gethsemane, where mm -hmm. Jesus is like, oh, take this cup away from me. If it's your will, but if not, then like, I'll take it on. And then I think it's, is it revelation that talks about like Jesus drinks the wine of the wrath of God undiluted. Yes. So it's this idea that Jesus is in treading the wine press alone, garden of Gethsemane. He's sweating great drops of blood. There's this imagery of, of red wine kind of an idea. And then at some point the imagery is used that Jesus drinks the, the air quotes, cause it's the quote, the wrath of God, mm -hmm. like undiluted on our behalf. That's the other text that Kessie has sent to me that I'd forgotten oh, is about. It? Yeah, the revelation. Ah, one. There you go. There you go. There you go. Um, yeah, and I, I just think that that's so wild that we come all the way back, and we know that these different books of the Bible were written at different times. Like, right. this book of Genesis was written prior to Isaiah, prior to mm. Revelation, prior to mm -hmm. Jesus. And the way that it all weaves together masterfully this beautiful story of redemption in the person of Jesus Christ is just so it's really cool to me. <laughs> I think it's I think it's just it's wild. And 
And then can we talk about the names for a second? I would I would love to talk about names. My grandfather's name is actually in this lineage. Which one? I uh, Zebulon. So, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> actually, it's not even much better than that in the sense that it's so bizarre. But verse twenty one, Naphtali is my grandfather's name. Oh, uh, he, is, okay. he was affectionately nicknamed Nap. Not that is he cute. Took a lot of na- uh, a lot of naps, but because of the name Naphtali. So that is cute. And worth. what does what does Nap Naphtali mean? You Na- know. I knew you were going to ask, so I was in the middle of Googling. Uh, let's see. What does Naphtali mean? It means a son of Jacob and the traditional eponymous ancestor of one of the tribes of Israel. That doesn't help. <laughs> what does it mean? Of course, it's a, it means, oh, interesting. Naphtali is a boy's name of Hebrew origin, meaning struggling. Ah, to wrestle. Yeah, interesting. Which would make sense, right? If that's kind of around the time that uh, Jacob was wrestling. Mm. Maybe that was a, a, a kind of a, a, a milestone for him. He's like, ah, I will name my son this to remember that moment in time. And I also, I think there was one that I saw about this where also it had something to do with his mother who had oh. who had been kind of fighting and struggling with, you know how they're, you remember that chapter where they're all just like, baby making and competing with each other <laughs> which one but uh, yes yes exactly <clears throat> so um i just okay so as i was looking through these names i think that it's interesting like we just talked about judah for quite a while and for good reason because through him is the birthright through him comes the messiah this is the messianic prophecy over judah but if we look at some of the other ones they're kind of whack <laughs> <laughs> like, like total lack of creativity like yeah he literally they they were named something but then after they were named something now like when he's giving them a prof how does it word it at the end here in verse 28 he blessed each with the blessing suitable to them right yeah and yeah, some of these yeah. blessings are literally him just saying what their name means and then he's like okay there you go <laughs> okay so what does tyler mean Oh, I'm so glad that you asked because this, this is maybe the reason why I felt the way I felt about this. I remember kind of sitting around, we're, we're, we're talking about in freedom, like we're all just vibing. There's a handful of sure. us and people are saying what their names mean. And it's like this dope thing because they're realizing that they're living in freedom, what their names mean. Uh, and I'm like, oh man, I'm I- so excited. What does Tyler mean? <laughs> so I Google it. And I'm sitting there, and oh, as soon no. as <laughs> <laughs> I just Googled it, <laughs> it was the most disappointing thing. Go ahead, read it. What does it say? Uh, Tyler means Tyler or Tile Maker. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it the lamest thing ever? And the Church of God said, "Amen." Amen. I was sitting, I was so disappointed because I was like, "One who tiles, as in roofs <laughs> or floors." That's like so, that's so lame. Tyler is a person who. <laughs> Who <laughs> tiles? And I was I just guess like, it makes sense. Are you kidding? Very me? on the nose. It's very on the nose. And that experience that I had, I feel like has to be how some of these sons are. Where Ooh. like he's just like <laughs> Dan means judge, and he's like, All right, you'll judge people. Actually, that one is kind of interesting. There's there's some prophetic stuff that happens with that. But like some of these, he literally is just saying things that it's like hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know why why dad had to put his hands on me and just tell me what my name means. <laughs> like hey Tyler Asher's I'm, food I'm, I'm about to leave I'm about to pass on to this next wor- world and I know I want you to know that you can lay tiles <laughs> you, you will lay many tiles <laughs> on like, floors I mean, ceilings but, that, but that's what but that's what's happening here right and he says Dan judge you will be a judge like, thanks dad 100% and appreciate the insight there <laughs> so here here's where I think we can spin it for for beauty which is actually what John Jonathan- hold on hold on Let, let's dwell there a little bit because I want to flex a little bit Nathaniel which is my first name means gift of God okay and and I don't know maybe it's just because if you have like the Anglo-Saxon type of name I'm guessing that's the etymology of Tyler I don't maybe I would but, guess uh, so as well when you have the Hebrew built into your name I feel like you're kind of automatically winning <laughs> yeah, I, there was an, there was unless a your name in, means that curse or yeah, the yeah. one who is my pain. I can't remember who that one was. <laughs> right, right, right. There's a moment in season, I think it was season two of the move, when Jonathan and I realized that we actually have the same name. Because oh. Joe Nathan or Nathaniel, we actually have the same root word, which is gift of God. 
And so that was it was it was kind of cool, but okay, so Tyler, let, let if we were to kind of extract as much uh, meaning from that name as we possibly could, and of course, this is what bearing does this actually have on your life? None. But you I, and I, I don't know. I about, think it might have a little, honestly. Uh, that's okay. what this has so, done. I've actually I've I've started to think the names we receive have some have something. It seems like when mm-hmm. we look at these stories, it seems too. I don't know. Keep going. Okay, so you and I were just talking about how uh, you are in a season of transition in your ministry here on island and how a large part of that happens to deal with some level of uh, renovating and rebuilding uh-huh. both the church and the school that you work with. And yeah, in, in, in a first level, first reading of how this could apply, like, dude, you're doing some of that stuff and it's not inconsequential. It's important work that needs to get done. But also, the name was used from this little Google, uh, was used for a person who lays tiles or bricks, often an occupational name for a house builder. And what do you not do in your role in the kingdom of God, but help to build up the house of God? Like in a very real sense, like I, I've heard enough stories and, I, and we won't have to go into great detail about these because I know that you won't actually brag on yourself or uh, and or tell stories that are given to you in confidence. But I know for a fact that this is what you're doing behind the scenes, that you are you're on the ground level and you're helping to build up the body of God in a very real sense. Mm. You know what's dope about this is that you and Jonathan having the same name, Gift of God, the <laughs> first time Jonathan was sitting there, when I was like, my name sucks. <laughs> and like, he yes, did <laughs> the exact same thing that you just did, which is a gift. Oh, okay. It is a mm. gift of God. Let's just let's just praise the Lord for us living our names out. Yeah. The Yeah, but but like think about Jesus, chief cornerstone. A hundred percent. And the New Testament gives the imagery of a, like every person is one of those bricks, so to speak, that, mm-hmm. that you build up the kingdom of God. And that's absolutely what you do. Yep. And no uh, shame in that. No, they're really and ever since then I've actually loved my name. Like I love that. I think I wrote it down in my my phone notes or something, but it was it was just the the realization. I mean, how many times in the New Testament? One, uh, first Peter two, I believe, it talks about how we are living stones built upon the chief cornerstone. Ooh. And then there's other places where it says that teachers, you know, they want to build up people, you know, their their work will it stand the test of fire. Like, mm. and, and so when I look at the way God has blessed me and the things that he's given me a passion for, I look at what Morgan and I do. Yes, there's an element of physical renovations like this house. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've done a lot of work with this house and, and we're going to do some physical work at the church, but it is absolutely the relational and spiritual work of establishing in people the truth of Christ Jesus in them, the hope Amen. of glory that actually gives them the foundation to live their lives unencumbered by their leaders or unencumbered by their circumstances to be confident that they are settled in him, Mm. that he is their teacher, that he is their rock, that he is their life. So yeah, man, a hundred percent. And so when I'm looking at these names and that's what I'm like, the bearing, I I just think for somebody that, that thinks, and maybe their name does mean something negative. Like some of these names do not mean positive things, right? Yeah. Yeah. But in Christ Jesus, we've been John 17, You actually texted this in our group chat recently, this thing about him keeping us in his name and that in Christ Jesus, we have been given an identity. We've been given several identities. Like we are his chosen people. We are beloved. We are holy. We are righteous. We're above reproach. These are things that he has spoken over us. We are forgiven. We are, we are just the, the children of God. So then what does that look like? Like it has a bearing on our life and it actually gets to be played out in in the, the blessings of Christ Jesus. If we are in him, like every single thing that the Bible says about Christ Jesus, we receive by faith because we believe that our old selves died with him. And now mm. the life we live, we live by faith in him. And I just I just think that that's the most encouraging thing I could ever tell somebody is like, you have been given a name, and maybe there's an actual name that God's going to tell us someday. I think the Bible alludes to that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was literally pulling that up. I'm glad Perfect. you mentioned it. Revelation 21, to the one who is victorious, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give that person a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to the one who receives it. Mm. There's this promise in Revelation that you know we actually receive a new name 
in the kingdom of God. And there's a certain sense in which that name is kind of secret. Now, I, now I actually wonder what that looks like. Does that mean that I can never tell Tyler my secret name? <laughs> maybe, maybe that's actually what it means. I don't know, but I think what's being indicated because because names are synonymous with story up to in, in scripture. Mm. Like we see that Dan, you're the judge. Like you're going to be a judge. Like it's because you're a mm. judge. So we're going to get a name that is somehow reflective of the unique experience that God and I have been through. Wow. And it's going to be one that's unique to me because my story is unique. And how so cool is like that? Really, really, really dope. You know what that reminds me of? <clears throat> uh, we've been doing for the Death to Life podcast with Richard Young. Which um, shout outs to Richard Young and the Death to Life podcast. If you're not on, you need to be on there. It's so it's so beautiful. And uh, we've had an artist from uh, the Philippines, John Felix Gassman, has been doing album art for each guest recently. By and the way, I have a bit of FOMO on that one because I was on season one. A hundred percent. I was one of the early Same. squad, but I never got my artwork. I never got artwork for mine. And I, I, and one of the coolest things Rich. about it is he keeps he makes the art, and every week as a team, we get to send the artwork for that person's episode to them. Oh, what a gift. And almost every single time, in fact, probably every single time, I just am not a part of all of them, the person breaks down in tears. Wow. Because they're seeing a visual representation of God's, like, it's basically their story. It's exactly what you just said. Their unique mm -hmm. story expressed in a unique way, yeah, artistically. Yeah. And they're just so touched. They're so moved because it's this thing they can look at that reflects back to them God's faithfulness in their life. And it's so beautiful. So when you're talking about God giving us a name that's specific to our experience, to the blessing of of our life, our testimony, mm -hmm. that God like, it's it, it, it's like, is God that artist that is then, yeah. hey, here it is. And like, this is, this is you. I just, I, I'm shook that that's going to happen and I can't wait. And I know I'm just going to be wrecked. <laughs> so, so in, in a certain respect, God is, his name is Tyler. Mm. He's given everyone a stone. He's giving everyone like, if you want to say like a brick, like a stone and a brick, he's giving them the unique name, giving them their identity, calling out their story in a mm. way that honors just their experience. Like that's, that's what you do. That's not lame. Builder. That's not yeah, lame at all. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Instead of Tyler, like one who lays tiles, it's master builder. Like that is, that is it. And is that not a reflection of the, the character of God? A hundred percent. It really is. So you gotta, we got to challenge these people. If you thought that your name was whack, start looking at it. Start looking at a different. If you need help from somebody, ask somebody, hey, there you go. How is the character of Jesus Christ reflected in this? So that I can I can have confidence that God's got beautiful <laughs> things that he's doing in and through me. Cause it's all about him. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's a joy Amen. for him, his faithfulness to be lived out through us. It's his joy, it's our joy. It's it's a blessing. It's a gift from God, Nathaniel. It, it it absolutely is. Hey, before uh, we give you that opportunity, I've been I've been asking everyone uh, in their closing episode of the move, just you know, what are some closing thoughts, reflections, anything else like that? I just want to say a quick thank you to our friends over at Dwell who have helped sponsor this season of the move. Yes, thank you, They're Dwell. Awesome, uh, and just. All of you guys who have supported Dwell, we just want to say from the move, we want to say thank you to you because when you support the sponsor, you actually support the the the, the podcast itself. And so if you haven't yet, consider checking them out, dwellapp.io slash the move. You get the discount, get all the things. But honestly, it's just a great service. And if you're into audio Bibles, this is a fantastic app. You get several versions of the Bible, several different voices, music options, all the things. And so dwellapp.io slash the move if you want 30% off. That being the case, Tyler, this is this isn't the last time we're gonna hear from you. God, God willing, right? We're gonna hear from you a lot more in all the different things. We've got internet church, we got the Death of Life podcast. Maybe one of these days we can successfully uh, convince your wife Morgan to launch that podcast we've always wanted Ooh. her to do. But she's been kicking against the goads. Uh, but is she hearing you? Does she hear she's me? Right there. She's she right can't next. hear you, but she's right there. Okay. <laughs> well, maybe there's a little spirit influence right there. I don't yeah. know. But but we're, we're absolutely going to hear from you more. But just as we wrap up like this season, literally like this season of life and this season of the move, just any any last reflections about the book, about what you've learned along the way, just any last words to 
those of those who have been moving with us for the last 90 or so episodes. Hmm. I mean, obviously the thing that I always come back to is the faithfulness of God in Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we look at this first book of the Bible, I think I love the verse from the New Testament that says that uh, since before the foundations of the world, yeah, right, we were yep predestined well, I'm slain before the foundation of the world, and and the the sacrifice. There's there's this beautiful idea that we have been on God's mind from the jump. Ooh, yeah, and before sin, He had a plan for it. Hmm. Uh, and that plan has always been giving up of himself. He's always had this this plan of just like, you are this special to him. And hmm. this is how far he he was always going to go. And so when we're looking through this book, like we're talking about the prophecies and these names, we have we've started in like the immediate blessings and curses in Genesis 3 and how they point ahead to the seed that would come from Eve. Like the whole thing is just telling the story of how God cares so much about you. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And it's going to be his faithfulness that restores that relationship so that you can be one. And mm-hmm. so just believe it, that it's true. He's done it. All of the things that I prophesied of, he's done. Amen. Yeah, faithful. He is, he's faithful. Everything he said he would do, he has done. Yeah. <clears throat> That's oh, something we can take to the bank. I'll say I'll say this one more thing. Hopefully from now on you'll never read Genesis as the book of how to live your life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please but don't. rather but rather the book about God's faithfulness. Because yeah. if it's about how you're going to live your life, oh yeah, yeah, not good role models first of all. <laughs> uh but second of all, the more that you try to live try to be faithful like if it's about your faithfulness, you're always going to fall short. But if it's about God's faithfulness, then his faithfulness will, he is faithful and just, one, to forgive you, I I misquoted, but he is faithful to work and to do his good pleasure in you. So just focus on his faithfulness in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Tyler, uh, again, thank you so much for everyone uh, who's been following along the journey. I know that you have been a blessing to so many people and you're just an amazing dude. And I'm glad that we get to, to share in these little moments together. And, uh, yeah, just want to say, I love you, man. Appreciate you. I love you too. Hey, can we, this is a little odd. Can we say a prayer for a blessing on the listeners? Yeah, that'd be great. Why don't you do that? All right, bet. Father, I just want to thank you so much for every single one of the people that are listening to this. Whoever's listening right now, I just want to pray a blessing over them in Christ Jesus, that that you wash over them the truth from this book, the truth of your redemptive power, of your love, of your grace, of your mercy, the truth of your finished work at the cross, the truth of new life in you, the truth that all of the things that you have promised, all of the spiritual blessings in Christ have been given to them. And so, Father, right now, I just pray that any lies that would try to keep them from believing and living in this truth as it's been revealed in you, be revealed and cast out in Jesus' name so they can walk free, set free by the truth in you. I praise you for that all in Jesus' name. We say thank you. Amen. Amen and amen.